Hello and welcome to this Globe Claritas presentation on the Octave application. The Octave application is available from the Image Suite Standalones Octave tab. As with the other Image Suite applications, we will first select an input data set. Once we have selected from the, drop the file selection widget the required input data set, which appears in this parameter form, we can then click on the scan button. Once the data set has been scanned and confirmed as suitable format and the information required from the trace head has been extracted, we can open the Octave application's parameter form. First, you can see that we need to define an output file. And there is a warning triangle saying that we need to do this before the application will run. So we create an output data set. We then have a choice of either running locally on the machine that we are running the image application on or submitting to a processing queue. I will continue to run locally on this machine. We define the number of channels per streamer, the receiver depth can be, either if it's constant, defined in the receiver depth parameter, or if it's a variable or slant cable acquisition, we can read it from a trace header. We also define the water velocity, and generally 1500 should be fine. Um, the minimum dip, which we will define as minus 0.2, and our maximum dip for the transform of 0.99. Um, we also have the damping parameter, and this defines um, how much the frequencies are boosted. We can leave this as a default of which is 0.1, or we can pick a frequency dependent damping if required. Now the damping field parameter is basically calculated from the input, input data set that is um, half millisecond. Um, I have frequencies out to a thousand hertz. So if I wanted to change the damping field and make it frequency dependent, then I would just use the left mouse button to pick um, different damping values at different frequencies. So I could apply more damping at the low frequencies, less, less damping towards the higher frequencies, etc. like this. So creating a frequency dependent damping field, which is very simple in the application. Um, I can then define the MPI command to run the application and the number of processors that I want to run on. And then I can click on the Octave button to run the application itself. As you can see, we get a um, progress meter comes up and then when the application's finished that progress meter goes away and we get a message in the logging window to say that the function has completed. Um, so the application is very simple and easy to run within the image suite module and easy to parameterize. I'll now show you some results from the application. So in Claritas window use the view seismic application and select so show you the amplitude frequency spectras so as you can see on here um, basically we've increased the low frequencies um, to a reasonable amount so in fact we've got frequencies down sort of improved down sort of below three hertz um, and also as you can see here um, we've increased the frequencies at around about the the notch point um, for the receiver ghost in this case which is around about 75 hertz we also cover this quite well in our globe claritas seismic reflections blog so if I bring up a browser if I do a search on ghost notch um, and then go down to here so you can see the basic the information on how to calculate the ghost notch so in this data we have a 10 meter K 
cable depth, so our receiver ghost notches are around about 75 hertz. So if we look at the shot itself, so you've got our input data, which looks like a fairly standard input seismic record, um, more biased towards sort of mid to high frequencies than the lows. And then we apply the deghosting, and you can see quite easily in there that um, we've got a significant increase in low frequencies. This means that some of these primary events like this one, which are a little bit sort of vague and um, they're sort of fading in and out across the offset ranges, when we apply the deghost calculation, then there's a more consistent, coherent event all the way across the near to far offsets. So general improvement on the seismic data with the deghosting application. Um, now the deghosting is only part of the solution for the full broadband processing, and I'll bring up some stacks that show the sort of full broadband result. So in terms of full broadband, um, that if you like would be um, applying an inverse Q correction in phase and amplitude and a spectral whitening correction to sort of broaden the remaining frequencies. So if I take again the frequency spectrograph, and as you can see from here that we've got a, a lot broader spectra for this data. So we've got again improved or increased low frequencies. The spectra is flatter and broader further across out to sort of beyond 100 hertz. Um, we could further push this by sort of increasing the amount of spectral whitening we do. But you can see certainly on the frequency spectrograph that we've got a significantly improved um, frequency range or bandwidth. And then if I sort of toggle between the input and output stacks, again, you can see a significant increase in the low frequencies, um, more, uh, better continuity on the reflections out throughout the sort of this package here. Um, so generally uh, what we'd expect to see from a broadband solution. Um, for current Claritas users, um, you can also run the Octave application from a standard Claritas job flow. And I'll bring up one of the jobs for you. So again, standard Claritas job flow builder, Octave application. It's a standalone application, so it does both the input and output of the data. Uh, we, so very simple parameter form, very similar to the um, Octave stand, standalone in the image suite um, in terms of parameterization. Damping's handled slightly differently in that um, basically the user has to type in either a sim single damping value or uh, frequency damping pairs to control the damping on the data set. If you were wondering about applying um, source deghosting, this can be achieved with the Octave application by basically supplying um, common receiver gathers rather than common shot gathers into the application with the relevant um, source depth defined in the receiver depth parameter um, and again within the job flow it's the same sort of thing where you apply you supply receiver gathers and the source depth that you want to correct for um, thank you for watching this globe claritas demonstration on the octave applications um, if you have any questions or would be interested in evaluating the octave application then please contact for an evaluation, claritas.sales at gns.cri.nz or for if you're a current existing Claritas user for support and, and um, assistance in using the application, contact claritas.support at gns.cri.nz.